Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 35, beginning in verse number one. Get your Bible if you can. Open it up to the book of Jeremiah. The Scripture Verse by Verse website can also or can be found at the Bibleversebyverse.com. You can study the whole Word of God with me as much as you want, for as long as you want, any book of the Bible that you want. Four series going through the Bible, verse by verse. You click and listen. Choose whatever you want to study. Bring your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. That's all you need at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. So as we go through the Bible, the fourth time, we come to Jeremiah chapter 35, verse 1. Father, sanctify us. By your truth, your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Jeremiah 35, 1. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Go unto the house of the Rechabites and speak unto them and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. The Rechabites came into the land of promise along with the Israelites, but they wanted to remain independent, and so they chose to live in tents rather than in fixed places. Three. Then I took Jaazniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazanah, and his brethren, and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites, and I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Haman, the son of Igdala, a man of God, who was by the chamber of of the princes, which was above the chamber of Messiah, the son of Shalom, the keeper of the door. And it says in verse 5, And I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites pots full of wine and cups, and I said unto them, Drink wine. Jeremiah told them to drink wine. He did not say, God commands you to drink wine. He just said, drink wine. If God commanded it, then they would have been bound, like anybody else, to obey any command of God. But he didn't say God commands you to do it. He just said, drink wine. Okay. Verse 6. But they said, we will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons, forever. The issue here is not the father's specific command. It could have been a command to abstain from anything or to do anything. The issue for our purposes and for Jeremiah's purpose was not the fact that it was about wine. The issue is the obedience of Rechab's offspring. So look at verse 7. He relates further commands from their ancestor. Neither shall ye build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any. But all your days ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days in the land where ye be sojourners. They were sojourners in the land that belonged to Israel. They were strangers. It didn't really belong to them, but they were allowed to live there. Their heart wasn't with the things of that land because they were just staying there for now. And in the same way as Christians, our hearts should not be too caught up in the things of this world as Christians. We're just staying here for a while 
on our way to our eternal home. That's why the Bible says that we are sojourners on the earth, just like they were sojourners in the land of Israel. It wasn't really theirs. It wasn't their home. It was just a place to hang their hat. And that's what this world should be for us Christians. It's not our home. Our king isn't here. Our eternal home isn't here. Just a place to hang our hat and serve Jesus while we are here. Verse 8. Thus have we obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he hath charged us to drink no wine all our days, we, our wives, our sons, or our daughters, nor to build houses for us to dwell in. Neither have we vineyard, nor field, nor seed, but we have dwelt in tents and have obeyed and done according to all that Jonadab, our father, commanded us. So they obeyed their forefather in all areas and at all times. Of course, their forefather had been long gone, but they had respect unto him. And so they remained steadfast in keeping his commands. 11. But it came to pass, when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up into the land that we said, Come, and let us go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans and for fear of the army of the Syrians, so we dwell at Jerusalem. The only time they made an exception to living in tent was when they had to move to Jerusalem for their own safety because the nation was being invaded. And it was a good thing that they obeyed their forefathers because as a result, they didn't have earthly possessions and that made it much easier for them to move into the city for a while. Verse 12. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will ye not receive instruction to hearken to my words, saith the Lord? The words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine, are performed. For unto this day they drink none but obey their father's commandments. Notwithstanding, I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye hearken not unto me. For more than 200 years, the Rechabites obeyed their forefather's command, even though he had been, like I said earlier, long gone. And that's in contrast to the Israelites, who would not even obey the living God who had pleaded with them and warned them to obey him for centuries. What a difference. And we see from this that God did not cho choose Israel, the Hebrews, to be his chosen people because they were somehow better than the rest of the world because they are not inherently better than anyone, even these lowly pagan Rechabites. Verse 15, I have said also, sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return now every man from his evil way and amend your doings, and go not after other gods to serve them, and ye shall dwell in the land which I have given you and to your fathers. But ye have not inclined your ear nor hearkened unto me. You know, God was only asking for what, what was reasonable. He even included a wonderful promise if his people would only do what was reasonable, but they just would not. And when they stopped doing and he sent prophets year after year, century after century, they, st they just continued to listen or to uh, disobey. 16. Because, of, because the sons of Jonadab the son of Rechab have performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded them. But this people hath not hearkened unto me. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will bring upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I have pronounced against them, 
because I have spoken unto them, but they have not heard, and I have called unto them, but they have not answered. They were doomed. The Hebrews, God's people, his chosen people, who he chose by grace and blessed by grace, are now doomed. Not because they sinned. The Rechabites sinned. You and I sin. The Israelites were not doomed because they sinned. They were doomed because they wouldn't repent of their sin and seek God's forgiveness and serve him and confess when they failed. That's why they're going to be doomed. The sin that dooms people is the sin of rejecting God's mercy and forgiveness through the Savior Jesus Christ. It's the refusal to repent. And no one is perfect, but if you repent and you sincerely have a heart for God and you confess when you fail and you seek with all your heart to serve Almighty God through Jesus Christ, you're not going to go to hell. 18. And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, because ye have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father and kept all his precepts, and done according to, unto all that he hath commanded you. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall not lack a man to stand before me forever. So, whoever his posterity may be, God knows the Lord is going to be blessing them. And we'll stop right there. And we see the same principle being played out over and over again throughout the entire book of Jeremiah. Live for God. Confess and repent when you fail. But if you tolerate sin, you won't be blessed. You will be judged. And of course, the most important thing that any sinner can do, and actually step one to being blessed by God, is to repent of all your sins and ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Until you do that, you're not even in the ball game. If you want to continue studying the Word of God with me, the whole Bible, you can at thebibleversebyverse.com. And if you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can do that too by praying for me, praying for God's Word. Also, you can click the Donate button at the top of the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, in the book of Jeremiah, we'll pick it up in verse or chapter 36. So long, everyone.